Hey Mancha! Top diddly guy guy! And if you don't speak Dutch, don't worry because I don't either. Um, thank you for watching. This is episode 4 of the 1978 Kawasaki Z1R restoration. In this episode, we're going to, we, me, uh, going to restore the rims, the wheels, um, sanding, polishing, painting, and it takes for freaking ever. Um, <laughs> it just does. Uh, I guess I'll, I explain it in the in the video as I'm doing it. So watch me drive myself crazy, restoring the wheels. Okay, so I gotta polish this rim. These look really nice when they're all polished up, uh, actually. This is that black one. Uh, hmm. Get some light, maybe. Uh, that's kind of a crappy look at it, but uh, this is, is with semi-gloss black. And I think it looks nice, but the Z1R is not going to have semi-gloss. It's going to have like, uh, what's it called? Not flat, but, uh, well, whatever it is. Whatever's between semi-gloss and flat. I want to say violet, but it's not violet. Uh, so you can see it looks nice, uh, but you got to polish it up. And you want to do the polishing before you paint it, because the polishing compounds get all over the place. So, uh, Mother's works, I found, I did that one with Mother's. It works really good. Basically, uh, for that one, I just, it was all, it was, you know, kind of had corrosion on it. I got the corrosion off and the dirt off with just a piece of gray scotch bright. And then came back and did another round with just polish. So this has been hit in the vapor honer with the glass, very fine glass beads that that has. So I'm gonna go around with. I'm gonna try this Noxon Seven. I heard this was good. Of course, there's a lot of people that make YouTube videos and they say things are good. And maybe they're good, maybe they're not. Depends on the application. So, let's see. I don't know whether this dirt that's showing up immediately is whatever's in this little piece of scotch right from last time I used it. Probably. I'm going to go around, I'm going to go around the outside here. I'm not going to show all of this because it's tedious. It would just take up a lot of video and disc space. Let's see if I can get the flavor. Yeah, so you can already see it's starting to look pretty good. Little ding there. It's kind of like a this little kind of ding. You know, do I chase after that or not? Who's gonna notice that? <laughs> Me. Okay, well that's uh, that's kind of the gist of it. Let's see if you can see. So you can see how this is shinier than than this that I haven't done yet. <clears throat> so I'll bring I'll come back at different different spots throughout the process. I have to get it all polished, and then I have to tape it. The taping takes forever before I can paint it. The whole goal is to 
paint up the black. So I'll bring you back in a bit. So I went around the whole surface the first time, and this is the only nick that I found. It's very small, and I don't know who would, who would actually notice that, but I'm going to try to get it out of there carefully. Starting to get to know these Rolox a little bit, so I think I'm going to try this red scotch bright, which it's not really red scotch bright, but whatever it is, it seems to be light enough, but it does take out some metal. see the close-up, but uh, well, you're going to have to trust me, because I think, I think that has worked. I, the original is not there, so now there's scratches, 220, and let's go, let's do some 600, have some 400 here, find it. 400, okay, so let's do some 400. <laughs> now I'm looking for where am I, where was it? I think it was here. So the scratches are pretty much gone. That's with the 400, hit it with the 600. come alive there. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see, but believe me, it did. <laughs> it looks pretty good. Oh yeah. So that looks good. So I think that that worked. Success. It's gone. I can still see a hint of it now that I just picked it up and looked at it. But <laughs> <clears throat> it's hardly detectable. So, I'm going to call that good enough. We've got the polishing done. I don't know how well that's going to come out of the camera, but yeah, looks pretty good. Um, I started sanding it, so now i got to sand. Where 
was I? I left off on this one. Seven individual pizza pie slices on each side. There's a lot of things you're gonna do 14 times. These, these ribs suck <laughs> to paint, but they do look nice when they're done. It's kind of a, this isn't like a smooth, glossy kind of uh, finish, it's rough, so I think that's, that's why people like to put them in a flat, uh, well it's not a flat, what is it, whatever it's called, okay I got tons of sanding to do, so I'll bring you back later, alright, all cleaned up, time to tape it up, in this part, sucks. There's just no way around it. Uh, what did I do first last time? I'm making the sparks first. Super careful that you don't end up taping something that needs to be black. Otherwise, when you pull it off, it's not going to look right. And if you lean the razor blade over too much, like I just kind of did with this one, you end up getting a little bit of the ah, See how you can see this kind of faint silver line right here? Well, that's the surface. Is it the surface? I can't tell. I think that's the surface. <clears throat> so you don't end up with paint on the surface, and of course you don't want that. This is the kind of thing where I think, so I did this, when did I do this? Last summer or some point, maybe five months ago. And by the time you get done with, done with it, you're like really good at knowing how to cut it and what's gonna stick, what's not gonna stick right. And then <laughs> you're done. And so the time, by the time you get any good with it, you're done. And uh, then you don't have to do it again for ever. I mean, how often are you going to restore these wheels? <clears throat> so that's one spoke. I didn't do a fantastic job. And that was what? Two minutes? So this process takes around. What time is it now? All right, it's one o'clock. So I'll come back when I have uh, one half of the wheel done. Well, 50 minutes later. <laughs> this just sucks. You try to, the, the spokes, even the spokes kind of suck. I mean, if you get it too close to the edge, then the tape is not covering the polished surface and you're going to get paint on it. If you get it too, too far, even microscopically away, it's like the tape is going to fold over when you go like this and get onto the surface that you want to paint. And then you get the same thing here. There's like this little beveled edge here, <clears throat> right here, that has to be painted. So right the transition between the polished part and the painted part is this bevel. And you have to get, again, if you kind of go like this, the easy way to be to do this would be to go like this. <clears throat> but 
then you expose the polished surface a little bit and the paint's gonna get on the polished surface. So you gotta get go like this and a little bit overhangs, then the little overhang part is gonna get on the part that's supposed to be painted. Oh, fucking miserable. <coughs> anyway, that's what I'm doing. So that was 50 minutes to do one side. Okay. <laughs> hour and a half. Hour and 30 minutes, hour and 40 minutes, something like that. So that's the front. And now I have to do the back. I think I'll spray the front and back at the same time. Now I need to do the exact same thing to the rear. Polish, sand, maybe maybe sand and then polished. I noticed I got like scratched it up a little bit when I polished it. Um, when I sanded, I scratched some of the polish marks. So I got a little bit of junk there that I missed. That should come right off. And before I do anything on this, um, you can see here, where does it come out? Can you see that in the light? Let me turn that light off. Can you see those lines there? Hopefully you can see them. Um, from the factory, you know, they, they have these little line things. How the hell you polish it with those little grooves in there? It's a real pain in the ass. Got some nicks. So that other one had they had sanded out these lines, and the lines kind of exist. Yeah, you can. There's a real light. It's really light, but they're very. There's very little itty bitty lines there. So I got to sand 14 spokes, and that area and plus work on any nicks. I think this one has some spots. Yeah, you can see here where like someone stuck a screwdriver in here. These are sharp little things. So I gotta take all those out with the with the Rolock discs. So that'll be a ways. Well I'm carrying on with the Z1R wheels. This uh, so I had vapor hone this it's kind of crappy in there. It's got a. It has a rough surface anyway. And it's kind of hard to clean in these like little areas here. But I probably could have got that with the vapor hone better, as you can see. Took off the paint there. It would have taken this off, I would think. Hmm. Well, I'll try. Scotch Bright pad on it, um, so I got to clean this one up. This one is the the one that was on the bike, and definitely sat out for some time. Uh, it's got some screwdriver marks here, so I have to go around and get those out. And then it's got <clears throat> it's got these lines I talked about earlier. You can see. See it there. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it. The screen on the camera, it seems like it's kind of whited out. But um, then if you look around the edges here, there's corrosion pitting. It's it's light, but it, it's there. So and there's also those the very faint lines that are around the edge. All of that had been sanded out of the front wheel, and the front wheel was in much better shape. So, I'm going to try to replicate that, There's some dirt that I missed, um, by sanding out these marks uh, to the best of my ability. And, you know, there's like nicks, I don't know how much I can do with that. Is that a nick, or is that where somebody painted it? Yeah. Somebody painted that. Um, I 
that's an actual neck, yeah. <clears throat> anyway, so, yeah, I have to use the roll lock, I think, and try to get these, these marks out of it for what I can, you know. This one is, is a lot worse than the other one. And it's going to take forever. So, I'll record some of it. Um, maybe I'll take a uh, time lapse with my phone. You see these things come up on online and you'd say to yourself, is that garbage or is that going to work? And... Uh, so what I'm doing here, I'm like trying to get some of these screwdriver marks out of this rim. They're right down there. So you take the roll lock and you go like that. And the drill is banging into the rim and you can't really get down there. I bought these drill extensions a while ago. Really for forks, because when you're trying to clean the inside of a fork tube, try to get down there. Um, it's nice to be able to run a drill. Try this thing. Hopefully you can see. Yeah, it works. Pretty significant corrosion on some of these parts here. This is a, this wheel would take a tube normally, and it was suggested to me to put a uh, tubeless, don't put a tube. Um, and so but with a tubeless tire, they have these uh, wedges that, that go in inside and kind of hold the tire in place for for the back for the back wheel, so that like if you uh, you know if you're doing a burnout or something, I'm sure they don't make it for you burnout. But <clears throat> if you spin the wheel, I think they were having problems with the wheel would spin and the tire would stay. And if it's tubeless, that's going to rip the valve stem off, I would think. So they have these stays that there's holes like one hole here, one hole here. And you tighten those up, and that locks the tire a tire bead against the wheel. And so I took those out and put in quarter-inch NPT plugs, and they have to be RTV'd in place. And uh, why am I saying all this? Uh, I think as a backup, I'll you know, can always have the option of putting a tube in it if the rim won't hold air on its own. I can put a tube in it. All right, so now I'm gonna start working on this inner inner part, inner edge. Hmm. Yeah, I'm looking at this one, and this one has not been painted. Well, I don't know if it's been painted or not, but. Uh, I noticed that this lip, so there's this part, there's the, the bead at the very top, then there's this flat part, and then there's kind of a angle, and then there's the flat part inside the rim. This little angle part is not painted on this wheel, and I wonder how that's supposed to be. Um, because the way I taped up the other one, I'm pretty sure that I covered that. Did I cover that? I'll have to go check that.
Oh boy, this is gonna take forever. So I tried, it started with 120 and that just wasn't taking the lines out. I went to 60. That takes the lines out, but it puts new lines in, scratches. 120 to smooth it back out. There's seven of them, I did it twice. That's 14 spokes. I tried this outside part. It's just not making it flat. And I'm hesitant to just wail on it with 60 and try and get through these bumps. There's these, it's got these bumps on it. It's like corrosion, I'm guessing. But over here, it's flat. There, it's got some bumps. Some bumps. So it's not a great wheel. I think I'll try to do the outside part by hand. I'm sure that's gonna suck. Um, but I'll, I'll see, see what I can do. Okay, so where am I? Uh, two hours of sanding later. Yeah, there's pitting. If you look up close, you can see it. I don't know what it's gonna look like when I try to polish it. But uh, anyway, I went from basically 120, 220, 400 on all the spokes and the outside part and I don't know. It, you look up close, it looks scrappy to me. Maybe I'll have to look around for a better wheel, but this is what I'm gonna go with. And that's only one side, so it's about an hour and a half to two hours of sanding for one side. <sighs> Man, this is tedious. Well, hours and hours of sanding later. Sanding is done enough. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but the marks are gone for the most part. So every individual spoke took the marks out, the lines, and it went around the whole wheel outside <clears throat> this side's got corrosion on it uh, I'm just gonna have to go with it the way it is I don't think I, don't know, I think I could sand on it and sand on it and chase that corrosion down into it I've had I think I've done enough um, and I think it'll look good enough when the uh, when the Polishing is all done and the paint is done. I hate saying that, you know, good enough, but uh, it is what it is. Maybe I can keep an eye out for a whole nother wheel. I've, I've probably put 10 hours into this freaking wheel. Um, okay, so the stock, wheel, the stock tire takes a tube and on the back wheel, they have these blocks that kind of hold the tire into place because there's can be a problem with slippage I guess if you do a burnout I don't know what the legitimate reason is for them to be there but we're gonna to try to put a <clears throat> 
tubeless tire on it and so I was told to drill out the two holes that take the chalk thing um, I wish I had it, I left it somewhere um, and put these quarter inch NPT in there and I don't seem to have the bright hex head for that so I'll have to go find that so need to put like goop some RTV I think I, think I have some black RTV and thread this insert in and that should be enough to hold it, make it airtight. Let's go ahead and put a ridiculous amount on. Hmm. <clears throat> now I wonder so if I put it in like that because I figure if it leaks at least I can get it out without taking the tire back off and regoop it. <sighs> Otherwise it'll look like that now that that's a chrome one which I'm gonna replace with a black one but uh, I think I'm gonna stick with that <clears throat> so let's do this other one here Okay, hopefully that will hold. Well, this is what one side looks like, all polished up. Looks all right, this is the better side. Oh God, this takes forever. This has been like three weekends or something. Third weekend, but I haven't only done this. So this is the other side, which I haven't final polished yet. So that, you can see how that kind of looks crappy still. Maybe it looks the exact same, I don't know. <laughs> uh, it looks duller anyway. So I'm for the final polish, I'm using Mother's. And for the cleaning polish, I'm, doing, I'm using Noxon. Um, <clears throat> I think you could use this for final also. The Mother's does seem to give it some kind of like glare, I don't know. I'm not going to go look, look at it again. Anyway, let's see. I need to clean this, clean polish this again. Sanding is done. Clean polish it. Final polish. Then I'll tape it. And then it should be ready. But I have to go over, get some of the gunk out. Make sure it's ready to paint. Ah, I screwed up on this one. This aggravating line that I took so much time to um tape and cut i think whoever painted this previously you're not supposed to paint that i'm not sure i should really go look online shouldn't i this is the one i can 
example I can follow. You can see on this one, the rear wheel, there's like this flat surface, there's this little angle, and then there's the, the rest of it, whatever. So that's black, right? So this part here, this angle, is left unpainted and pol if you polish it. This is painted. But on this one, there's a distinct lip right there. Um, and you know, this one, obviously, this is the way this one was painted. Let's see. On this front tire, front wheel, see, I can, I can, this is like an angle. There's no lip between this flat piece that I'm rubbing my finger, the tip of my finger on, and, and this angle here. This is like a 45 degree cut. If this is flat, 45 degree, and then 90, right? So this surface and this surface are 90 degrees from each other. This is a 45 degree transition. There's no lip. Wow, these were in pretty good shape. I need to paint those a different color. Um, so if I paint this and paint over that angle, it's going to look different from this. So do I just go ahead and paint over that angle on this one? Excuse me, after I just polished it. Hmm. Not sure. is all polished up if you look up real close you can see you know that corrosion those little pits there that button if you back off like this <laughs> where where 100 percent of people who look at the bike are going to be um you know, I think it looks fine. Oh boy, this is time consuming. Okay, so now what do I have to do? I have to clean it off and then tape it and then I'm ready to paint it.
Okay. Ready to paint. But it's five o'clock. Actually, it's not ready to paint. I still have to do that. But it's five o'clock and Saturday night and I'm going to take off. Can anyone guess what season it is? <laughs> hmm. Well, the wheels are as painted as they're going to get. It's like a rough surface anyway, so they don't have to look perfect, but uh, I think they don't look that fantastic. Four, four coats of trim black. I don't know. It's a combination of like the surface is rough, and there's some corrosion and I don't know. I mean like what's that gonna look like? It's smoother. You can see I'm not impressed with my work. <laughs> Yeah, that's my reaction to my wheel paint job. Eh. 
That's why I don't do paint and body. I just get enormously frustrated and I don't have the patience for it. Installing the rear disc. So that's 20. I'm supposed to take it to 30 foot pounds. Foot pounds. It's 25. So they have these locking tabs <coughs> and just trying to check if they're aligned. They're pretty much aligned. Uh, now I want to put these locking tabs up and not mess up the brand new paint on the rotor. You can see this inner part's been painted. look at this paint the wrong way and it's going to come off. <clears throat> like that. <sighs> Fuck me. Okay, so it is 30 foot pounds. Uh, how am I going to hold this? <clears throat> now, this sucks. <laughs> I got I to put this in the vise. Okay, let's, let's try this. I'm going to start at 20 foot pounds. Okay. 
Here's the rear wheel, and here's the front wheel. The rotors I had, um, the same guy that's going to paint it is doing a bunch of work with me. Um, his name is John. He um, refinished the rotors. These are not the original rotors that went on it. I bought this set from the fellow that I bought the bike from, he has a lot of extra parts. Uh, the ones that were on it were no good. Or they're not very good. So, uh, there's a lot of rot. Unfortunately, I figured that out after I had them restored. So that cost me some money. But in any case, these ones look pretty good. Both sides. I think that's going to do it. watching episode four I don't know how interesting it was <laughs> and I didn't show anywhere near all the time I spent I didn't I didn't show uh, the two and a half hours that I spent in the vapor blaster uh, cleaning the wheels up before I even started uh, I think I did that actually before we put the wheel bearings in uh, it's kind of it just trying to film anything in the vapor blaster it just becomes a big uh, mist of water. So anyway, uh, that sanding on the rear wheel, that took forever and man did that stink. Um, I'm just thinking I have another set of wheels to do <laughs> how much I'm not looking forward to doing it. Uh, so let's see what do we get the, I think I, think I showed you know uh, bits and pieces of the process. Um, that I use. I don't know if I did, did it the right way. I've done two sets of those, including yeah, two sets of that style rim, KZ1000 rim. Um, and uh, that, that was the second set, and I have a third one coming up. Um, anything to add to what I have in there? I'm thinking, I don't think so. Uh, you saw the end result I showed after we got the, uh, after I got the tires mounted and balanced and they're all set to go. So I think I have now all the elements for the roller. So I have the wheels, the frame and all of the stuff that goes to the frame is done. The fork uh, lowers are all polished up and I have new uh, fork tubes because the old ones were garbage and new seals and everything. I, I do have to put the forks together. Um, and I have new rear shocks and I have enough to start putting the roller together, but I'm going to hold off on that uh, because you know I don't have a lot of room here 
And I'm looking over here that you can't see over here. Now, there's, got, there's two bikes over there. There's a bike over here that I don't want to show quite yet. There's a, there's a bike right here under a cover. So just in here, there's four bikes, not including the Z1R. So if I make the Z1R roller, it has, it's going to take up a slot in here. So I don't want to quite do that yet. I'm going to wait until I have the lower end of the engine back together. And I just got the timing chain in, so I, I'm ready to do that. So I have a little more cleaning to do on the engine and painting, and then I'll put the engine lower end back together, and then I'll be ready to put the roller together. Uh, what's going to be in the next episode, I think, is the brakes. I have to restore all the brakes, um, just, just the calipers. The, the uh, master cylinders I sent out to a guy who does them, specifically on the Z1R. Um, so you won't get to see that, but um, you will get to see the brake calipers getting redone. So anyway, thank you for watching and see you later.